get started guys. We are a couple board members shy of what we still have a quorum. We're waiting for our new board member who hopefully will be here soon. Can you hear me on this thing? Uh, I'm Robin Murphy. I'm the uh, Southwest Board Chair and I'm the Design Representative on the Southwest Board. And I'll let my uh, colleagues introduce themselves. I'm Mama Tonkins, and I'm the local residential of the board. I'm Daniel Skaggs, I'm the business representative on the board. Uh, one of our board members is in the audience because he is uh, on the design or on the uh, arch with the architecture firm who's presenting tonight. Um, this is an early design guidance meeting and it's your opportunity to provide fundamental input at an early stage of a uh, large-scale project on Alaska Street. The applicant for this project is Josh McDonald, who proposes to develop a new seven-story, 80-unit residential building with 18 live-work units and 5,000 square feet of retail and an office at ground level. There will be parking for 70 vehicles, which will be located below grade, the existing structure will be demolished. The address is 4724 California Avenue Southwest. Uh, the, the purpose of this meeting is to uh, discuss and analyze the project site, vicinity, and design options. We'd like to get the public's input uh, at this stage. It's, it will help the design team that helps us provide guidance. The board will then identify uh, the citywide design guidelines highest priority for development of this site. The format for this evening is we'll do uh, 20 minutes of the architect's presentation. The, after that, the board will ask clarifying questions for 10 minutes. We'll allow the public to speak for 20 minutes. And if everybody wants to speak, uh, try to keep your comments as brief as possible so everybody has an opportunity. And if uh, you have information, or if you want to talk and reinforce things, the points have already been made, just make those points quickly and try to come up with uh, other comments so that we can get through as many people as possible. Now, we only have one meeting tonight, but we still would like to keep it to an hour and a half. Um, and then after that, we, the board deliberates for 25 minutes, and you're welcome to stay while we do that. Uh, we'll work here at the table, and if you'd like to listen in, that's perfectly fine. Um, and after that, we'll decide. Uh, the idea is to, to allow this project to go on for master use permit submittal, um, which is the next step in the process. Um, after this meeting, the DPD will write up a priority guideline report. Uh, applicant develops the design and submits for the full master use permit, including SEPA and zoning issues. And then there will be a, a board and public review uh, updates for a future meeting. And you're all welcome to attend that. Uh, I'm going to let uh, Shelley Bolser uh, fill you in on some of the DPD uh, issues. Hi, I'm Shelley Bolser. I'm a land use planner with DPD, so I'm going to be reviewing this project as it goes through the permit process. Um, and as Robin mentioned, there's a public comment opportunity at tonight's meeting. And uh, so, can I get a quick show of hands for people who might like to offer a public comment tonight? It's not your only opportunity. We'll, we'll take it, but. Okay, good, so, so not necessarily everyone. Um, if there's a lot of people, we tend to try to limit it on time a little bit. But um, the kind of things that the board will be hoping to hear from you tonight are what do you think about where this building could be located on the site, the massing, perhaps where different parts of the building should be carved away as opposed to others. What do you think about the pedestrian connections, uh, the vehicular access point, um, and what kind of things would you like to see uh, as this building goes forward into the next stages of design? If you have comments or concerns about things like the number of parking spaces, or the density of the building, or the height of the building, those are things that are not within the control of the board, and so it's um, they can't actually speak to any of it. If you do have comments or concerns about things like parking, you can direct those to me, 
and I will be reviewing that with the SEPA review of this proposal. Um, and, I, and I'd be happy to explain to you outside of this meeting what we review and what kind of things we have control over, what we can mitigate or condition. Um, and there are agendas on the table at the back there, and my contact information is at the bottom of the agenda, so you can email me, that's usually faster, or you can call me as well um, with those kind of comments. Uh, after tonight's meeting, within about two weeks, I'll write the report, and if you've signed up with your name and your postal mailing address on that sign-up sheet on that table, then you'll get a copy of the report from tonight's meeting, and you'll also get notice of any future meetings for this project and major steps in the permit review, like when they apply for the master use permit. So that's the process in a nutshell. So I, I just add that um, this is the early design guidance uh, format is set up by the DPD. The Weber Thompson is going to present three separate concepts that uh, we'll review, and they have a preferred concept, and they'll explain why. This is your opportunity to provide input at an early stage, and really uh, reinforcing what Shelley was saying. Uh, we're talking about the, the building aesthetics, the pedestrian scale, the entries, the vehicular entries and pedestrian entries, circulation around the building, uh, connections to other buildings, those kinds of things. So at that, I'd say, go ahead, you guys. This on? Okay. Yes. Okay, great. I, I know you probably don't want to hear from the developer, but I just wanted to make a quick introduction. Um, so I'm Greg Van Patten. I'm with the Wolf Company, and uh, we are um, we are acquiring the uh, property at 4724 California Avenue, and we are partnering uh, also with Urban Evolution. It's a Seattle-based development firm. Uh, Matt Corsi and Chris Rossman back there. Uh, so, uh, a little bit about the Wolf Company, uh, we, uh, it's a third generation family company. Um, I'm the local uh, Wolf employee here in Seattle. It's a third generation family company, been around since 1949, and uh, based in Spokane, also has an office in Scottsdale. Um, and we specialize in multifamily housing, uh, particularly mixed use, where we can really um, be in dynamic urban neighborhoods where we can have a positive impact on the community. Uh, we're happy to work with Weber Thompson. Um, before I turn it over to them to really talk about the design, just wanted to give a little bit of flavor. Um, we're, uh, we're excited to present, uh, it's just massing at, at this point, of course, but it's really, uh, been, uh, really been shaped by some thoughtful input that we've received from uh, the community. We've had, I think, between six and eight um, community meetings thus far of various sizes, and it's, we've really gotten some great input that's really helped uh, to bring out some good ideas and, um, and really help kind of shape this building. Uh, so we've met with the Chamber, the uh, West Seattle Junction Association, Juno, uh, other um, engaged members of the community and really have gotten some, some really thoughtful input. So um, they'll, they'll be, uh, uh, Weber Thompson will be talking about some very uh, um, specific things about the design, but what we've really tried to um, engage in this design based on the input that we've received. As you'll notice that we're proposing a, a mid-block pedestrian connection, um, which will, um, I think, really provide that pedestrian pass-through um, both in and off of California. Um, we'd like to do, uh, we're proposing uh, nice wide sidewalks. Um, that was one of the comments that we've received from the community is that um, the ability for the storefront or the store owners to really kind of spill out and engage that street. Um, upper level setbacks, we'll be talking about that as well. And really optimizing that retail, I talked about the mid-block passage, um, and having the residential entry and lobby not off of California, not taking up any of that front, it's really dedicating that for retail and doing that off that mid-block passage. So we'll talk about that as well. Uh, the Wolf Company is uh, long-term investors, so this is really a long-term investment in the community. This is not a develop it and then flip it and run away and let somebody else deal with it. And I think that's an important distinction to make, is that we are in this for the long haul and really have a long-term commitment to the community. We also have a strong commitment to sustainability. Uh, this will be lead silver at minimum and perhaps even better than that. So. Um, um, so uh, 
Lastly, um, after tonight and as the design proceeds, you know, as she mentioned, it's just at the massing stage at this point. As the design proceeds, our, we intend to continue to proactively engage the community and really seek that input and uh, as we go forward. So um, with that, I'll turn it over to uh, Jeff Bates at Weber Thompson. I'm Jeff Bates from Weber Thompson. Uh, pleased to go, the, uh, go through the EDG package with uh, all of you tonight here. So we'll go ahead and get this kicked off. We are time limited. I'll, I'll try to go through this as quickly as possible, but there are some pretty important things I want to try to stress as we go through it here. And obviously you'll have the opportunity to ask questions, uh, as Shelly mentioned, part of the process. Uh, 4724, uh, first page here, just basically talking about the, uh, the site. Um, Greg mentioned the overall site. I don't know if this helps or if it yeah. 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 stay with the microphone here. Um, Greg mentioned the overall program, and I think it is important to, to talk about the, the lead silver goal uh, of this in terms of development objectives. Um, these are these are sort of the program development objectives. Some of the other development objectives, uh, some of the really critical ones are, are the uh, feedback we've heard from various people in the community uh, about some of the, the goals and priorities for the project. Uh, Greg mentioned some of these, mid-block crossings, uh, setbacks at the upper levels, allowing light and air at the street, and really providing a, a very successful retail and commercial base along uh, California Street. So. Um, next slide. Um, project site um, in the middle of the junction here on California uh, between uh, Alaska and Edmonds. Um, next slide. I'm assuming most, most of you here are familiar with the site, um, so I'll move through this pretty quickly. Um, in our learning about the site, some of the key things we discovered, obviously the solar orientation. This shows uh, the sun rise in the summer, or I'm sorry, winter and sunset in the winter, and then conversely in the summer sunrise, summer sunset. The nice thing about this site is we have excellent southwest orientation for solar. We also have uh, excellent territorial views west and potential Puget Sound views toward the southwest. Um, looking at the site in a little more detail, and you'll see this diagram a couple of times tonight. These are uh, some of the existing projects in the neighborhood, the QFC site, um, or building, the, the mural building. And then the proposed, or uh, actual permitted, uh, Connor project here. Um, this, which we've been calling the Petco site, just because the existing tenant, um, is our site. And as you can see, it's a very different kind of site as opposed to having the ability to be on the corner. We're, we're sort of landlocked, we're an infill site. And so one of the important things as we go through the presentation is to think about what that means for the site in terms of future development uh, parcels that can actually, in theory, uh, be right on the property line. So we've, we've got to deal with basically all these facades, and then of course the existing facade um, on the mural. Next please. Um, just a quick look at um, elevation of Alaska or California. This is um, a massing uh, elevation diagram of the Connor project. This shows uh, the 85 foot zoning height which has been in place for a number of years in the junction and of which has recently been manifested by projects that have been built and are taking building out to that envelope capacity of 85 feet. We're actually <clears throat> an elevation building to less that we're proposing to go to about 75 to 78 feet as opposed to the maximum height of 85 feet. Um, in plan, um, again, the context of the old Petco site, one of the critical things here for us is the opportunity to really reconnect the northern part of California Avenue to the southern part. One of the things in walking the site, talking to business owners, residents, is the fact that right now this is sort of a dead zone. And you can look at the, the, the width of the retail base here, and you can easily see what happens when you walk from here to here. Not, not a whole lot. So we think there's an opportunity to reestablish connectivity along California here. Next, please. The other side um, of the site is, again, zoned for the 85-foot um, zoning envelope. Consists currently primarily of single-story um, retail uh, developments from um, Alaska down to Edmonds. We do have an existing mid-block crossing in place um, along California Street right in here. <coughs> and next slide. Um, existing projects, existing context, the darker scale buildings are obviously the larger scale buildings in the neighborhood. Um, QFC, um, the mural, uh, the proposed Connor project here, some of the office development over in this area here. And again, just to look at this mid-block connection um, 
And then obviously, you know, some of these wonderful two and three story um, existing more historical scale buildings up and down uh, California, especially north of Alaska. This diagram, I um, want to light on this here quickly and, and talk about um, how important California Street is as a, as a pedestrian designated street. Also, um, talking a little bit more about the mid block here. Um, can, can everybody see? Do I need to move out of the way? Okay. Um, the mid block connection is in place here right now across California. Half of it's been built here on the mural. We intend um, to see this other portion built when the Connor project is completed here. There's a very important sort of uh, retail opportunity here where that mid-block crosses to 42nd Street that the mural is kind of taking advantage of. Um, we intend to do a similar thing here with the mid-block context California Street. These are some examples of, of some of the things we've been thinking about the mid-block crossing. We'll talk more about that in detail, but some of the key factors are um, a width of at least eight feet uh, for pedestrian circulation. That's the width being proposed by uh, these projects currently. We've got about a 10-foot setback. Um, the other important thing is having this mid-block crossing open air, having as much daylight as possible to it. Uh, we see things be some great things in terms of overhanging uh, lighting, trellises, landscaping, um, providing a nice connection, not a thoroughfare. We don't want bicycles, people moving through at high speeds there. We want the connectivity. We want it to be intimate. We also want the possibility for people as they move through that to look into the glazing as they move along this block and make this connection. One of the other things too is peripheral parking, the way this works and, and provides a parking reservoir for pedestrians that actually go to California Street. We think this will sort of, as time goes on, have an opportunity to develop in a similar kind of way. Um, I mentioned the parking wall condition. Um, there, um, on the, many urban buildings we have a party wall condition where there's no windows on the blank wall. Our matching schemes will show how we've tried to minimize those as much as possible. On the other hand, we do think there are opportunities. There's a rich history and legacy of murals um, on, on buildings and around uh, the neighborhood here, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. This is something of interest to us that we'll be exploring as the project is developed. And next slide. Um, zoning analysis, I'm going to just move brief, briefly through this. Uh, we talked about the, the, we have the green factor of 0.3 and the lead silver target for the project. Uh, the 85 foot zone currently in place and uh, this is just some other detail thing which is available online in our package. I'm going to move quickly to the next slide here and talk about um, some of the images uh, that we've used as inspirational images. Um, obviously existing streetscape uh, things going on. We've heard from, from merchants about uh, uh, retail that really works, retail that activates the street. Um, operable doors, uh, retail opportunities can really spill out onto the sidewalks and enlarging the width of the sidewalks whenever possible. Um, again, just the things that are in place up and down California and the junction in general, uh, some of the street furniture, the detail, the lighting, the signage, just everything that's in place that makes this a wonderful uh, downtown actually for, for West Seattle. Uh, these are some examples of some massing uh, pieces. Again, they're just design inspiration, but they show upper level setbacks, um, things that you can do at the street level and providing animation. Um, retail, commercial at the first two floors, having the residential above is something we've heard loud and clear from the community, being re really clear about how the building expresses itself with these, with these different uses. Next, please. So as Shelley mentioned, um, we're, we're going to go through our three matching schemes tonight. Uh, we have three schemes that uh, address how one could uh, have the program array on the site. Um, massing scheme A is a very simplistic diagram, but it does show the two-story retail commercial base. It does show uh, crenellation and modulation along Alaska. It also shows what I talked about earlier um, in terms of the party wall. So when you look at this building from from looking from north to south, where you see these lines indicate where we can put windows in the building. Where we don't have any lines on the on the drawing here shows the party wall that is actually on the property line and may present have the opportunity for the murals and, and addressing that in a, in a different way. Um, looking um, from south to north, which we think is very important as the density kind of steps down as you move south on uh, California toward Edmonds in the lower density area. Again, the party wall notion here and more blazing. Um, 
that's a problem with the scheme. The other problem with the scheme, we think, is that there's a very symmetrical condition between uh, where we have the mid-block crossing on the north and the party wall condition on the south. We think this is an opportunity to do something really special to mark that mid-block crossing. Next scheme, matching scheme B, starts to develop um, a little bit more articulation between the upper floors of the building, again, the retail commercial base. Um, what starts to happen as well on the south facade, if you start to see a smaller area of party wall, more opportunity for glazing, and especially on the north side, this is the only party wall, blank wall condition, which is, this is looking at that area in plan, so on either side of that, we have the opportunity for more glazing on, uh, on, the, on the north wall. Matching scheme B, the preferred scheme, um, is a scheme which we think handles um, uh, all these issues in a way that's very successful as a beginning premise for massing. Again, we're not proposing a yellow building with no windows tonight. This is a simple, <laughs> to be clear about that, this is an envelope drawing that shows the simple massing and the relative shaping with regards to all three of the schemes. Massing on scheme C, um, if you look at the south facade here, uh, very small, minimal portion of blank wall. The most important thing is the setbacks are starting to develop, and we've heard from the community about uh, two-story versus three-story uh, podium heights. Um, this is retail, live, work, and then we'd start our residential here at this first floor because uh, the thought is, as some of the development happens uh, in the neighborhood, that a three-story base may actually be preferable because from a view angle, as we step back to the other floors, the higher that base is within reason, the more the upper part of the building actually diminishes visually. The other thing that's important about this scheme is um, marking the corner of the mid-block here. Um, unlike the, the, the projects, the counter projects to the north at Howard Trail, big street corners, we have the opportunity to develop sort of a mini corner here with the pedestrian connector and do something, do something special there. Um, next uh, slide actually shows this in context a little bit more. So you can see the step back that we've done um, on California and actually turning the corner toward the south so that we can get more, blaze, more glazing toward those southwest views we mentioned. We think that's better for the units, better for the building, the way it lays out. And also, it's better for, key back up one, Mark? It's also better for diminishing the massing of the building as it goes up. Okay, go forward, please. And then you can see how that turns the corner. We have a further setback here, <coughs> blank wall here on the south, and looking on the other facade, blank wall here on the north, that corner piece tower, and then the mid block connection through the piece there. May I, may I ask a question? Um, well, I think, Shirley, is, it, do we, is that fine? Um, we, should, we actually need to wait for the right. specific on this. Okay. We, we can go back to that during your question. All right. Um, and we will. Uh, next slide, please. Um, the next uh, couple of three slides are going to actually give, take us into a little more detail on the overall project. We went from the matching diagram to a plan view. And let me orient you here. This is California. Here's the mid-block crossing. Here's the alley. This is the ground floor of the building. Um, what we're proposing is garage entry off the alley here, proposing live work on the alley to help activate the alley and have eyes on the alley. We actually think the alley is an opportunity to do something nice and not just have a typical sort of alley. We think there's opportunities for activating that as well for safety and security and just good urban planning. The big um, the sort of issue on uh, California is the importance of successful retail. I mentioned that earlier. What we've done, uh, most importantly, and this is something actually we do very rarely on uh, our multifamily buildings, is actually have a primary lobby for the occupants um, inboard off um, on the mid-block connection. So that way we can have full retail um, the entire length of the building, nominally a 40-foot depth of retail. Also, we can fully service the retail from the alley. Um, the other important thing is uh, the dimension here. Um, this is 10 feet. We open this up at 15 feet. It kind of the pedestrian, the, the retail plaza here with the mid-block context, the sidewalk in California. Also, the sidewalk existing is 12 feet. We'll propose pushing that back an additional six feet for an 18-foot number here and a 15-foot number here to really create a special place. The next slide shows this three-dimensionally um, standing in California looking toward the corner this is looking all the way through the mid-block connection. So you can see in California, through the mid-block, uh, this is where the mural is, all, all the way through to 42nd Street. 
open air except for this porch that we have over the entry into the uh, apartment building. And this shows a sense of, of more detail. This is a three-story uh, step back from the portion where we step back, do the first step, and then the, the additional step at the top floor. Um, retail ground floor, live work at the second floor, and then the first floor of residential here and here, also creating decks and opportunities for landscaping to really, really transition that, that base, diminish the upper part of the building, and really focus on that streetscape with warm materials. We're looking at potentially wood and other materials as opposed to a standard aluminum storefront. And, and really being able to create seating opportunities for people here in this widened area. This is a 15-foot area here. Really mark the connection to the mid-block crossing and pay, just as mentioning all along here, close attention to the base of the building where it meets the retail on, on Alaska. Um, design guidelines. Um, one minute, okay. Um, with Seattle design guidelines, this is scheme A, scheme B, and scheme C. Uh, we've gone through and looked at how the different schemes uh, adhere to the, to the guidelines. And again, scheme C, from a point of looking at the West um, Seattle Junction guidelines, move through quickly. Um, Mark, these guidelines, um, they're talking about uh, speech safe compatibility, height, bulk, and scale. Um, architectural cues relating to the streetscape, um, retail uh, spaces for people, human animation along California. Um, keep moving, please. And um, how we can set the building back, do interesting things, provide overhead weather protection, canopies at the retail, and start to think about materials a little bit, how we develop um, and relate to existing projects uh, following um, West Seattle guidelines, thinking about uh, blank walls, uh, treatment of alleys, um, and then also the last slide shows uh, thinking carefully about, for one more please, the uh, um, looking at uh, landscaping to enhance the building and site, which we think is a great opportunity, not only on the terraces of the building, but also on the, on the sidewalk as well as the mid-block connection. So I think the, the last uh, slide concludes here with um, looking once more at the solar impact of the site. Um, winter, um, sun angles, looking at how the orientation works. Summer sun angles, obviously, um, you know, from dawn till dusk, you look at the shadow pattern. Um, and again, how the, the southwest exposure, uh, trying to keep that street open uh, for solar on the, on the west sidewalk there. And that um, concludes that. We'll go ahead and uh, you know, going to deliberation or uh, public input at this point. We're going to ask you some questions first. Okay. Uh, Norma, do you have any questions? Well, I have just one uh, so far. Uh, you mentioned that you are going to have some landscaping on the ground level, but I don't see them on the package, I don't see them on the drawings. Uh, are you going to be more specific on the next line? Absolutely. Um, if, if you could go to the ground floor plan, we'll, we'll show you what So we're looking at providing landscaping in these areas and these areas will be further developed at the, at the next uh, response meeting. Yeah, I know that you're being already the point three of the uh, green, uh, green factor, but um, I would like to see more landscaping in the ground. Thanks. Daniel? In this slide, where are the adjacent um, buildings, the dentist office and the building to the south? Just relative to the sidewalk you're showing. Um, I mean, uh, 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 yeah, we, is that it there? Yeah, that's the adjacent party wall to the south here. Um, to the north, the, the office here actually steps back a little bit off the sidewalk. We okay. have pretty much uh, going along here. And then the mural, um, the mural actually starts here and extends past us uh, about another quarter or so that we saw that. And in terms of the development, it doesn't seem like you've paid much attention to what's potentially going on in the alley. Um, you know, I mean, the, the mural project has a, a nice alley, so to speak. Um, and I'm just curious what you guys would see for fenestration or development of that. Well, at the, at the, at the ground level, um, <clears throat> we're proposing is um, lobby leasing here and having a high degree of visibility, not only from the mid block, but also uh, to the alley as well. And also, the lid works, you know, we're showing potential access from the alley, as well as interior to really animate that and create um, some successful storefront and landscaping uh, along the alley. Mm -hmm. Here to 
here. And then basically, this is service and garage entry. And then, in terms, one thing you didn't get to is kind of the roof. And, I mean, you show a roof deck, you know, create right. space up there. Um, that, you know, I'm assuming that's strictly you know, a residence, residential sort of. It, it is currently a res uh, residential amenity area uh, accessed by the elevator and stair door. Claire, any questions? Clarify questions? Okay. Um, can you go back to the plan for a second? So one of the things the mural does on their crossing uh, connection is they have, uh, and you have photos of it too, it's, the, uh, it's kind of some cover that drops down gracefully as you walk down that grade change. And I know that, I noticed in your plan you have cover at the residential entry. Um, are you planned, did you consider, yeah, there you go. Did you consider uh, uh, roof any other cover in that crossing uh, when you're in early design here? Um, really, the, the main cover we have currently is we have um, this cover over the porch, which is up at a double height. But the idea for the mid-block is, is we like the idea of trying to keep the open air as much as possible. And any kind of covering, we like the idea of doing stringing lights, uh, overhead green, and, and really, you know, any kind of substantial covering, awnings, canopies, those kind of things, keeping that more on California Street. We're really trying to keep this open air as much as possible. There will be some covering here as that soften continues around here. But I think most of these mid blocks that we've seen, the more open the, the sky they are, they're kind of nice. It's something we're willing to explore and take a look at. Uh, we just haven't gotten there yet as far as blazing and overhead rain protection and those kind of things. My other comment was um, Scheme C, uh, I think in your narrative you're talking about doing some kind of a significant corner element and it, you know, it's early in the process and we, we appreciate that. <clears throat> but what's unusual about Scheme C other than the crossing is that the uh, northwest corner of the property has a twisted grid. It's, clearly it's going to be a different uh, skin on there and, and I'm just wondering where, is that <clears throat> I don't want to put you on the spot, but is it uh, what's generating that? Well, what's generating it are a couple of things. One is we've observed that the mural, um, they go literally off the grid a little bit and, and they do kind of swing out and, and create uh, a bit of a rotation, a skew, if you will, if you look at how that uh, building meets the uh, right there. So we think that's something interesting to consider. We, we, we think this is fine. We, we propose doing it in a little more subtle way. Um, and our way of doing that would be more looking at is this sort of uh, corner element that um, sort of breaks away in a similar way to create a more of a dimension uh, as the mid-block contacts the sidewalk over here. The other, the other reason to go back to the matching scheme um, is we like the idea of creating um, an expression here architecturally that can be different from this expression here to try to provide, provide more variety on the street. It's kind of getting away from that Petco you know, mid -bo big box idea where we can do a variety of break the building down into two significant pieces here and then start breaking it down into additional smaller increments along the retail base um, in Atlanta, California. Um, my last comment or question is the, uh, the this, I, I don't, maybe you said, Jeff, that uh, the difference between A, B, and C is, are the square footages, the volume, approximately the same for all three? Well, I think they are about the same. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, so now we're going to turn it over to the uh, you guys. So um, I guess I'll hand this mic. Or no, actually, it'd probably be best just go up there. I think Shelley already asked, but who's interested in speaking? Can I show up there? Okay, um, why don't you go ahead? Um, I, first, I'd like to ask my question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, why, you thanks, come, hey, can you go up and talk on the microphone so I can hear you? And also introduce yourself. All right. Uh, my name is Hane Malloy, and I live in the real, real apartments in the northwest corner on the seventh floor. Mm -hmm. And my question is about the, uh, could you comment on the massing on the um, east side of the building, the side that I'll look at? So we do something about the noise next door, but... Yeah, I apologize. It's actually another like theater venue next door, and they have uh, dance and music classes, and that's kind of the purpose of the building. So we can't ask them to be quiet. <laughs> so you're, you're 
your question specifically regarding the east facade of the uh, building. Correct. Um, you know, frankly, we, we are not, not there yet as far as looking at the next grain of detail and articulation uh, along the alley. We spent um, a considerable amount of time looking at California edge here, the south edge, which addresses this kind of big view here, and then the north view, pedestrian connector, um, in terms of our um, next look at how these units are actually arrayed. That's, that's will be in our next presentation, looking more at window placement materials and how we really address it. And obviously for the for the success of this building, leaseability, good apartments, good places to live, we need to pay attention to, to this interaction here. One piece of good news for, for us is the mural is quite a bit longer than our building. So even with this development, there's still a, a fair amount of overlook here past this building, but obviously this area is a, is a big concern. Yeah, I live in the corner, the northwest corner, right there. Uh -huh. That's where I live. Okay. Um, anyone else interested in speaking? Go ahead and go up to the mic and introduce yourself, please. Hi, I'm uh, Rich Kohler. I live in West Seattle on 49th Ave. Um, I've actually been invited by Weber Thompson to work with them a little bit early in the process. And uh, first, I'd like to thank them for inviting me. And uh, I do think they incorporated some of the feedback that, that I've given, certainly. I do have a few things I'd like to say about the design. Um, one is my, I basically have two priorities that I'd like to see incorporated in the project. One is to try to conceal the upper mass of the building, since a building of that size is uh, pretty much can dominate the, the streetscape. But if you uh, stand next to the building and you feel like you're next to a three-story building instead of a seven-story building, uh, there may be some techniques to do that. And I, I guess I have two questions. One is to whether or not that was successful or not in the uh, dimensions by putting in a setback. Uh, the other question I had was really, I think you touched on the, the twisted seven-story levitating tower. Um, for me, that's not really consistent with the historic ties that uh, the West Seattle Junction has to our area. Um, I'd personally like to see some the, sort of the brave modern designs pushed into the triangle area and then more traditional designs done in the junction, which would mean that, although we're talking about massing right now, Using an angled technique without um, structural supports beneath implies basically a modern, uh, modern architectural style. Uh, Weber Thompson actually created, um, and it's not shown in the packet, but they did do a traditional take on, on the, uh, the, the tower, which I've got with me. So I'll distribute it to the audience and, uh, and to you as well, so you can take a look. But I think this, this we're square to the street, and using a style like this would be more consistent with our, uh, with at least what I'd like to see maintained in the junction area and tied it with some of the styling we have, like the clock and the lamps and so on. But maybe you could comment on those separately. The first being the, whether the upper setback is sufficient to pull back the upper mass from the street, and, uh, and also whether you think that this, uh, this traditional style is one that you could go with. Do you want the architect to respond to that, or anyone else to respond to that? I my first we'll, we'll, we'll go, we'll talk about it. Okay. All right, uh, anyone else? Hi, I'm Lynette, and I'm uh, Lynette Hovland, and I'm the manager of the mural apartments, and I work for the Riverson Residential Group, and I've just been there since late March, and my, I just wanted to point out the architects, um, to the development team that our alley is very congested. Um, we get a lot of moving tracks, um, both for people moving into the building, moving out, but um, not only that, but we have restaurants and bars in the alleyway. So I think, you know, the idea of the work loss is great. I've, I've worked in buildings that had those in the past, but um, I just want to point out that, you know, for moving, if you're going to have movers, uh, that is something to think about and where they're going to park. Um, also, um, our residents already have kind of a tough time getting in and out of the garage sometimes. Um, when those um, restaurants are getting their deliveries or their pickups, um, it just creates a lot of congestion. And then I don't know how that would work, you know, with traffic um, coming in and out, if the alley is going to remain two ways or if it would be one-way alley. Um, I just wanted to point that out. And then also, um, we're disappointed, of course, that it's going to block a lot of our views. I realize that at this point, um, it's probably too late for that, but 
Um, I don't know, the alley just feels kind of narrow. I don't know if they consider like a step back or something. Um, and definitely some landscaping in the alley. I don't know, something to point out. But um, I think parking and the parking garage is a real huge concern for residents. And then, do you know um, when the mall, the demolition would begin? Well, the master use permit, it's probably going to take six months. Really? The okay. permit would take probably four months, so it's about a year. About a year. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. Sure. Um, Shelly, what is the width of the alley? Uh, yeah. I'm not sure the alley is. It's a wide 16-foot alley. So it's 16 feet, and each side so uh, wide is two feet. feet. And so the murals, the murals set back two feet. The murals set back actually a bit more on their on their side, but on the second level. But the actual alley dimension is a typical city of Seattle, 60 foot alley. The mural also has the advantage of that turnout. If you can see on that the lower picture, there's a that inset space there. So for the entrance to the mural garage, it's possible to turn out right there. Right. Yeah. And so it will be a tight turn <laughs> into the proposed building's garage. All right. Um, is there anyone else? I saw a couple more hands in the back. I'll go to the front. Hi, my name is Renee Commons, and I'm a resident of West Seattle. I live right near the Triangle of the Street, and I'm also a member of the Junction Neighborhood Association, Juno, and I'd like to address the Design Review Board tonight. Uh, first, I'd like to thank uh, the Wolf Company and Weber Thompson for their tremendous community outreach on this project. It's, um, in my experience in the last two years of being a community activist, it's unprecedented. They've done a great job of uh, really uh, working and being proactive with all of the the people in our community, not just the businesses, but the residents too. Um, I think as a resident here, we, we all have an interest in maintaining the integrity of our neighborhood. And as Rich points out, we, we see that changing rapidly in front of us. Um, the equity project, formerly known as the Connor Project, is also zoned in uh, uh, L85, as is this uh, 20, that's the project here that we're looking at now, the chemical project. I think the, the struggle here is uh, the community versus the zoning, and we're looking at um, the community working with the board to really try and blend the 85-foot zoning with the current one, two, three, four-foot um, height that we have in the junction today, and making that blend work. And, and that's the challenge put before you. And, and what Weber has come up with right now, in my opinion, is, is really nice. Um, Primarily, it's the, uh, the, the massing that's going on here. I think they've done a nice job in the sea view, but you know they've chiseled a little. I think there needs to be a lot more mitigation of the mass, um, especially along California, um, to break this up into smaller quadrants. And I'd like to see also a, uh, I'm recommending the, <clears throat> in the mid-block passage, which is a key asset, for the neighborhood because it not only connects California through to the alleyway and on through to um, 40 beyond, beyond by the um, by Safeway over there, it also connects back to 44th Street and um, the narrow corridor that's currently between 44th Street and California is a is a tunnel-like corridor which you know is, is very you know it's been here we've all lived with it but it could be so much more we're we're working with um, Weber Thompson now on this project it could be a wider passageway where they have it right now. They've got it at 10 feet. Um, they have the entry on this beautiful passageway. I'd like to recommend that they include some greening and widen it to 15 feet so we can see bicycles going through there. And we can um, have strollers and people crossing all the way from 44th on over to, um, I guess it's 42nd over there. Thank you. <laughs> and um, then the, the third thing is materials. And uh, there's been, it's, been really interesting reading the 95 comments on the first post on the West Seattle blog. Went through all those late last night. And a lot of our community is really concerned about the canyon effect. And I, I read that over and over, the canyon effect. And, it, and it's coming and it's looming. And, and when we look at these architectural renderings, the trees are small. I mean, where do you put a person in this scale? And looking up three stories to a six foot setback and then another 
four stories beyond them. It, it's, it's a long way up. So I really um, asked the board and I asked Weber Thompson and the Wolf Company to really be sensitive to the fact that we need to break up this massing just a bit more to widen the corridor and to really make this, and I, and I think they will, I, I'm confident they will, make this a, a, a very enduring building that will last 100 years in our neighborhood and we'll all love it in 100 years. Um, and that has to do with materials. We've seen a lot of materials that, um, cheap materials that do not weather the test of time. And we really encourage them to use uh, quality materials. And that's why a lot of the talk on the blog was about brick and references to traditional materials, just because they endure the test of time. Okay, thank you. participation and we're going to take all of your comments into account. Uh, we can do that. Do that. All right. Thank you. So, 
So we're aware that the building's very large in relationship to the existing buildings, but the reality is in 10 years, probably most of those buildings will be gone. Um, one of the comments I was going to say is the, uh, this, this crossing, I, you know, some, there was some comments about the crossing, and I think the crossing is important if the architect could really take, and I'm sure they're aware of this, but uh, really work on the, the materials in the, on, you know, the, the paving surface in the pedestrian realm. Uh, I think it's a great idea to take that residential entry and put it off of that area to the north as opposed to putting it bisecting the retail. That's, that's fabulous. Uh, it's, it's uh, you know, you can view that as a secondary entrance or it's may, it might be more prominent. It depends on how you look at the crossing. But it's, it's definitely unique and I, I think that's a good solution. Because generally that, that residential entry is going to dominate the street facade and, and really it should. It, uh, California is a retail street. Um, I also was going to comment that the uh, southwest corner of the building has this three-story massing that's got, uh, it's got three, three uses in it, retail, uh, amenities, uh, I'm assuming those are amenities for the uh, residents, and then uh, a, a residential level. But they're all grouped into one block, and I think that's pretty effective uh, in, in limiting the height of the build, the perceived height of the building, because your eye focuses on that part of it. What I'd like to see is a little bit more of a setback at the top of that block to the rest of the mass, because it is a seven-story building. And uh, there is a setback there. It's not clear how much it is. It's, it, it looks to me like it's not occupiable space. It's, it's maybe three feet or maybe four feet. Um, the rendering shows some planting up there, but I'm not sure if that's uh, uh, a deck or something. But, but it, it would be nice if that was actually some kind of a terrace that actually segregates, that uh, you know, kind of defines what's the street and what's the residential portion of it. Uh, You're talking about that. Yeah. Yeah, and, it, and there's a rendering in this, yeah. uh, in this drawing, Daniel. Yeah. Uh, you can see it there. And you can really see the strength of that, uh, that material, you know, if it could be like, it could have a base that's got some resident pedestrian scale to it, uh, durable material, stone, brick, uh, something that's got some historic character uh, uh, right there at the street plane. And then, you know, as far as this twisted thing goes, how do you guys feel about that? I think that was my original question, is whether or not that's an appropriate response to sort of creating a somewhat more traditional street front. Yeah, the materials go far. But I think this, the skewing yeah. really changes it. That's somebody commented. Yeah. When you slide it out here, it becomes something else. Right. Um, my, I'm fine with it. I think you know there's enough. Uh, there's already enough context here to, sh to show the uh, twist. Uh, it's, it, I think this is a lot more subtle than was done at the mural. Sure. It's a lot more subtle than was done at the what's the QFC building. Uh, I, I would like to see more details about what they are proposing for signage. Um, because the signage has so much to do with the context of so the uh, There's a comment about the east facade and it needs work. Uh, clearly it's important. There's a lot of residences that are looking at it. The alley's important. There's a lot going on there. Uh, right now it's blank. It's excusable, you know, it's EDG, but some work needs to be put into that. Uh, modulation or materials or, you know, clearly there's going to be units looking out there and they're probably going to have balconies that look right into the murals balconies, which are 16 feet or 18 feet away or something like that. So that, that's a sensitive issue. Um, you know, and, and right now it's clearly the, the back of the building. It, maybe at the street level, you know, there's definitely some effort to have been put into the uh, working out some of those those details. And there is there is actually quite a bit going on at the street level, but above that it could be a blank wall. Is the uh, uh, is 
as, as uh, I think Jeff or Rick pointed out, called it concealing the upper mass of the building. Uh, I think it's our job to, to kind of uh, let this gracefully integrate into the context that's already there. And um, frankly, I don't think the QFC building does a very good job of that. It's, uh, it's a very massive building, very uh, uh, repetitious. And material-wise, it's just uh, it's monotonous, and, and, it, and it feels very it feels bigger than it almost is. And I think the mural building does a better job of that yeah. um, through geometry and, and, uh, and uh, twists and materials. Um, I, uh, I do think that the materials in the mural building aren't, aren't significant for the for the street front. Mm -hmm. This one is occupied, right. and, and certainly at the, at the street level. Well, yeah, uh, what happens in the, I feel like the step, um, it, it looks too busy, um, too much modulation um, on the materials are, to me it's the best way to see I, I, we were just, Norm and I were just at the end of the, uh, the corner building, the Connor building uh, design review when it was approved a year and a half ago, uh, two years ago, whenever it was. Um, and I know, my understanding is that through the process of design review, it went through at least two or three DRBs. Um, there was a lot of public comment. That building evolved a lot, and Weber Thompson designed it. So I think they can take some cues from that process. They know that, I mean, uh, this is an important location to the residents in West Seattle. So um, if, if, if you guys could learn from that experience that you went through several years ago, I'm sure you, you have, um, it would help resolve some of the hot, hot button issues that, uh, that the public's concerned about. And the primary one is fitting a seven-story building into a context that's in transition. Are there any existing plans to uh, offer parking to anyone in the building other than tenants? You know, 20 years from now, if we've got a really successful, I don't know if it's going to be large enough for a restaurant or some sort of a, a use in there, there's a need for parking. Is there going to be a capacity in the building to allow someone to park inside the building if there were a bank or something like that? You, Shelly, you know if the, I would assume they have more than 2,500 square feet of retail, and I think they're required to like working for that uh, beyond that. We haven't done a design analysis yet, but I believe that there may actually be very little parking required in this area, if any at all. Um, a lot of the urban centers and urban villages, the city council has been moving towards requiring less and no parking in many areas. So um, I suspect there would not be parking required for the retail, there may not be the um, even a one-to-one -one ratio of the that sense required. So, so what we're saying is a lot of the applicants have the choice of providing the parking as they choose for their parking lots. Right now, the, the Safeway is, is really the only sort of parking besides the couple of the foot lots. Otherwise, it gets pushed into the middle. Yeah. And that's not going to change. And actually, in this uh, site, they are not required. Parking, parking is not required in this site. That's because we are located right to the junction uh, transportation hub. Okay. So this parking issue is uh, clearly a big deal, but the city's in transition on that as well. And um, it's, it is what it is. The, the city has decided to uh, make this market driven. Um, they are providing 70 parking spots or something like that. I don't know what the mural provides, but uh, the idea is that people walk and get rid of their automobiles. Um, <coughs> so, you know, just looking at the mass thing, well, let's talk about A, B, and C. So, what do you guys think about A, B, and C? I, I think C is the strongest. It's been by far. And I think that you know, the mid block. The mid block connection is the strongest in that, and I think the retail is the strongest in it as well, right. having a large open space. So I, I, I would vote yes for the, 
it's scarier. Well, they're all essentially the same volume. Uh, the, the, you know, I'm, not quite, I'm not quite sure how that is. If, uh, if scheme C has a 10 foot setback open to the sky from the north, the other ones don't, and the other ones seem to have more uh, volume up against the property lines that isn't op open to fenestration because they're on the property line. That doesn't, something doesn't quite make sense. Well, they have, they have more cutback sort of space yeah. on mm -hmm. both sides in the middle. Uh, Clearly, C is the most defined, uh, most uh, articulate, or most worked on. They, they put the most effort into it and developed it. And, and there's, you know, the fact that it has the mid block, block crossing and, and actually the middle of the block is, is uh, quite is great, and it, and it allows them to do the residential entry off of that, which is great. Um, I, I I kind of agree with one of the comments that was made that uh, this it is still a pretty massive blocky building, and and it'll get broken down when they put. Uh, uh, windows and, and materials and, and railings and, and uh, different levels of detail, but um, some effort should be made to kind of per perhaps pushing back the seventh floor, taking a chunk out of it off the California side, possibly off the uh, alley side as well, um, to, to let it recede. You know, uh, that would be the most effective way, I think, to do that as opposed to just doing it with materials. And also at that, that difference between the three-story block and the, um, the rest of the residential. Um, it seems to me that's a good opportunity to have a real setback where you push the plane of the building back uh, and, and define it as residential as opposed to more of the commercial street frontage there. In fact, it would be good if all the built, all the future buildings along that block did something similar to that. I think the corner, the Connor building it, did that, didn't it? It does. So. Where's the, what page do you guys have that building on there? It's the thing that shows it. 14. Oh, it's 15. 15. 15. I mean, they are kind of attempting to address that. Yeah, it looks like a two-story. Yeah, it's hard, it's hard to tell if those are lying or not. And, you know, I'll point out, just looking at that, uh, that building is far more modulated than it was when it first came in. And, and if you look at this building, it's, it's, it's pretty blocky. It, it could stand to have some more... Uh, a little more respect to the street, push it back a little bit in key areas. Um, so are we all in agreement that Scheme C is good? I think. Yeah. So let's go through the checklist. So according to Weber Thompson's graph, if it seems to addresses every one of the <laughs> issues. Um, yeah. What do we, you guys want to take a stab at what site planning that you feel is the most uh, relevant to this project? Uh, parking vehicular access. 
it, 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 it seems pretty, almost a low, normally these, this could be a big deal, but where else are you going to put it? Of course, there's going to be a lot of alley congestion. There's only going to be more alley congestion as the block is developed, but they have it in the right location, and it's, it's uh, appropriately designed, or will be appropriately designed. Yeah, I think it's questionable how accessible that, that drive actually is. The okay. Figured out. How so? How so? Well, I think it's very narrow. Mm -hmm. And it, it comes right up to the edge. So I don't think there's a lot of flexibility to get in or out of that, to bypass. What about trying side triangles out of there? Does that still it's, care? It's in our own well, it's true. I mean, you're, well, you're yeah, right. Yeah, it seems like if the neighbors are concerned about if someone is moving in or out, I mean, they would provide a space for loading and packing or unloading for the building, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, and still, the, when the, the trash pickup is happening, they're going to block the alley. Right. Well, they're blocking the alley. Yes. I would think that if they're going to load or unload, maybe this lobby, which is just kind of loosely defined at this point. Maybe there's an area here that's set, you know, this is just a plane against the alley. Maybe this sets back and that's an area to drop off stuff because that's where you're going to take your uh, furniture if you're going to move into a unit. This is off of that space. Well, or, or, or it could be I off of that. Right. So I, what I'm hearing is that you want to see information on how they anticipate dealing with loading, move in, and move out situations. Yeah. Right. And, right. And, the, and the driveway entry, right. um, making sure to have adequate turning radius, and yeah. the, where is the trash storage. Right. Mm -hmm. Hey, nobody. Well, it seems like they have to push here. <laughs> but, uh, materials I, I would say C2 architectural concept and consistency yeah. uh, you know it, 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 these important buildings it, it's nice it, it to have some overarching concept that unifies everything as opposed to throwing uh, patterns and materials on the building to break it up yeah. in a pleasing way I mean, nice to actually have a, a strong concept of the building response to. What else is there? Human scale. Definitely. Uh, so it would be nice in the next meeting to have uh, some renderings like the one on page uh, 17 that are rendered with uh, materials and a little more detail. Uh, pedestrian environment, uh, the crossing, that, how that's developed. It'd be nice to see a little more information on that. Well, I, 
Yeah, and I think the more you develop that, the stronger that crosswalk becomes, mm -hmm. yeah, visually, because it's a, that's already a little sketchy thing coming down the street. So right. the yeah. more you can define that intersection, right. so it's a bit more stronger. Yeah. Okay, uh, pedestrian environment D. Well, I think this D2 for me, just because I'm talking about doing something, you know, in terms of murals or whatever, what like, the blank walls. Maybe it has to know what that means, you know, and how appropriate that is, right. and how it ties into the rest of the yeah. architecture of the development. So, um, I, you know, overall, I think we've been pretty critical and nitpicking a little bit, but overall, I think it's, it's, it looks good. They've got the right idea. Obviously, some effort has been put into this. I wouldn't want to be completely negative here. I think the plan works pretty well, and the, the way the crossing relates to the street and relates to the residential and the retail is all open to this California is huge improvement over what's there currently. So that's all positive. And uh, Weber Thompson's a good firm. They'll, they'll get it right on the next one. 
Yeah, we well, we obviously didn't see any presidential forms, so we don't really know what the articulation will be like. Or the yeah. next one. Yeah. Right. I, I, now I'm kind of confused why there's uh, uh, how you can have this resident residential right up against the north and the south property line. Um, maybe the you know I don't I'm looking at where the stairs are in the building they're internal so those those are residences up against those walls. Um, well, I think the east west the yeah. pockets of that east west exposure. Right. Right. They're, you know that might be an opportunity though to pull back a little bit. Sure. They're, 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 this building could easily greatly be improved if there was eroded a little bit. There's there's your residential. <laughs> Something that I was a little bit um, that I found different about this this particular design is the live work that was proposed at the second story, and so I wondered if the board had anything, any guidance they wanted to give on that. I wasn't sure how that worked. Right? Yeah. Just more information. Yeah. It, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, in plan, the live work units are associated on the alley. Uh, not but clear they, how they would be on the front. Well, uh, at, at one point they described, I mean, in that slide, the green part, which does live work, is sort of what you were referring to as a community. Right. So, oh, I, work yeah. so I'm not yeah. exactly sure yeah. what's the access to that. Right. What does that really mean? Right. Yeah. We, uh, we can train the ground floor uh, where we can actually have the access to connect. Okay. Um, we skipped over the detail thing, but the main entry for the residential, we have a double height space here with a staircase that gives good access to the second floor. Mm -hmm. This is dedicated to give access to the work units at the second floor building. So the, those units would be, individuals who live in those units would be, it would be the same level. That unit would be their unit. And the ones at the alley are just the same level and they're on, on the alley, right? So the, the one above at the back side, this, are there live work units on the alley? Or on the second store? Correct. Yeah. So it's more What's the height of the first floor? It's Just, uh, 14 feet clear. Okay. 15 foot floor. All right, so does the board feel that it would, should move on to recommendation stage? Right. Yep, I agree. Yeah. Okay, so four in favor of recommendation for our next step. Great. Thank you. Thanks for coming out.